Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Kam Tao from Amazonian Angelfish. In this video here, I'm going to be doing unboxing of the Angelfish from Sao Gabriel. And for the first part of the video here, since we're just waiting for the fish to arrive, um, we're going to talk a little bit about where these fish come from in South America and, you know, just the Amazon territories and everything. So if you guys are interested in that stuff, continue watching. Um, however, if you guys are just only interested in watching the unboxing portion, go ahead and skip to around the 17 minute mark. That's when I do my unboxing. However, I'm going to give you guys a warning. This is a rant video. So if you guys are here for the entertainment, uh, enjoy the content, guys. <laughs> Alright guys, so right now I am just waiting for the fish to arrive in the mail. Um, it's sent through FedEx and for reasons unknown, I cannot contact FedEx to hold my package so I can pick up. Um, as you can see on the side of the corner there, on the top left hand side, it is 8.42 in the morning. So I have nothing better to do, so <laughs> let's uh, let's talk a little bit about these angelfish here and their location where they are caught. And uh, as you guys can see here, I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm just going to go ahead and slowly zoom out of the map of where we are at right now. So this here, as you can see, is the United States of America. And going down... I have three location here that is marked on the map and as you guys can see here this is uh, South America here and in Brazil Brazil is a very very large country and two of the location here is marked in Brazil and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and change the landscape here so it is easier for us to see what exactly how the landscape looks like so this is the satellite view of the place here and I'm just gonna zoom in on one of the location here and this location is the exact spot as close as we can possibly get it to be accurate so this location is called Sao Gabriel this is the place where these angel fishes that I'm gonna get it's where they are caught so it the location of the fish tells a lot about the fish as well. We have to understand that depending on where we caught the fish, we try to replicate the environment as best as we can to get these fish thriving and breeding. So this is Sao Gabriel in the Rio Negro in Brazil. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit out here. There's a location on the map here that I want to showcase. Okay, that place was farther than, than I expected here. <laughs> okay, so the name Santa Isabel is a region. I also want to showcase this map here that I found on an article online that shows the river system of the Rio Negro here. As you guys can see here, Santa Isabel is located right in the middle between Sao Gabriel and Barcelos. And so the normal Santa Isabel that we always see the very bigger, taller, rounder body is located in Santa Isabel, and that's the collection point. However, for the fish that we are going to be getting today, comes from Sao Gabriel. So the Santa Isabel region is located around the Taprugara city here. And as you guys can see, Sao Gabriel is located on the left side and Barcelos which is the middle point between Manaus here. So it goes to show that these fish right here that you guys see here, even though they are marketed as Santa Isabel's, aren't exactly Santa Isabel. They're completely something else. Um, to me, just me personally, I wouldn't call these as Santa Isabel. However, because people up here in the States they don't really care to think about these fish that much and for the exporters that are exporting these fish they want to tag a name that is well known so in order to do that they just tag the name along calling them Santa Isabel which they are not Santa Isabel Santa Isabel is around this region right here as far as you can see on the screen here and that ends where Santa Isabel is so in a way 
The fish Sao Gabriel is their own fish. They're not Santa Isabel's. They are Sao Gabriels, and they are something else. And that's the reason why they don't look like Santa Isabels. That's the reason why they don't have the normal coloring pattern as we see for the Santa Isabels. So from now on, I'm going to call these fish for what they are. They are Sao Gabriels. They are not Santa Isabels. So it tells the story of how these fish were caught. And if we zoom out a little bit here, um, the river starts at this point over here, at this location right here, and uh, it seems like the river starts here. It can, it starts a little bit more up here, but this is the main spot where it becomes a bigger river, and it flows all the way down and all the way through here, and it goes to this spot right here, and this is where Sao Gabriel starts. Or the region of Sao Gabriel is. So the fish is caught here in this location and it is transported down river all the way down to Barcelos. Once it reaches Barcelos it goes to another shipper. It gets transported from Barcelos all the way to Manaus. Manaus is the hub where all of the wild caught fish in this region gets exported and that marks another spot on the map here and notice the water here, the Rio Negro is really, really like more like a bluish color uh, from satellite view. I'm sure it's darker than that. <laughs> That's why it's called Rio Negro. Um, but over here, it is another river. It's just exactly how you guys see it on YouTube or on Google Images, the Amazon River, where they really merge together. And we can really see that through the satellite, which is really interesting. And if you guys go down here, a little bit more this is where Manacapru is and the reason why we see so many Manacapru angelfish in the hobby is because it's right next to Manaus and Manaus is the main hub for fish exports it's really easy for people to catch the Manacapru angelfish in this Amazonia River here and um, transfer it over to Manaus and have an export and also because this is a really big river system the fish that are considered Manicapru that we see um, we are expecting the red shoulder Manicapru however this river system is so huge that it extends all the way up here like individual people will catch these Manacapru angelfish from the Manacapru River up here, transport it to Manacapru City down here, and have it transport to Manaus. And because the location of the Manacapru River is such a large place, there's many many different location and many many different variants of the Manacapru angelfish. So. All the mana capro angelfish we see doesn't necessarily have the red shoulder trait that we are looking for. Um, most of the time, mana capro fish that we see are just regular silvers. We get upset about it and we're like, hey, how come these fish aren't red shoulder? Like, it's not what I bought. It's marketed as something that it's not what it is. It's not a mana capro fish, but technically is a mana capro angelfish. So, um, just like when we're fishing and everything, for me, I like to catch bluegills. And there's many different subspecies or many different types of bluegills. And it depends on the lake or the region of, of where you are fishing at or where you're catching these fish from. So even though it's a bluegill, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be um, a certain type of bluegill. Like for example, in the bluegill family, um, there's a subspecies that's known to have very colorful red marking called the orange spotted sunfish and that's one of the bluegills that I always want to catch and I can never catch that fish because <laughs> the water system is just so big and it's and you have to go to the exact location just to find that fish and I will catch other type of bluegill like the pumpkin seed and <laughs> it would make me happy so it goes to show that even though the fish is from a certain river, it doesn't mean that they look exactly what you are expecting for. So anyways, um, 
we're gonna zoom out here and we're gonna go back to our original location and let me just try to find that on the map here okay I see bars lows okay so if you guys look here the reason why we see so many mana cap roos in the market here is because it's very 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 close to Manaus here on the lower right hand side corner of the screen here and Sao Gabriel is all the way up there all the way up to the top left corner up there and I'm gonna zoom out here to see how far this place really is compared to um, the rest of the world here all right if you guys look at the map of where I'm at right now so for me I'm not good with maps <laughs> I'm just gonna compare it to what my experience is and I'm pretty good at going to st. Paul Minneapolis because my in-laws are there the two location that is marked in the middle and on the right hand side on the bottom of South America is pretty equivalent in comparison from Milwaukee Wisconsin to st. Paul Minneapolis now if you think about it that is a very very long distance for me to drive here to there it takes around five hours and that is for terrain that's already been paved and I'm going at 80 miles an hour <laughs> just to get there can you imagine by boat how long it will take just to get from Sao Gabriel to Manaus that's crazy like and it's just using the river system and, and you guys know how slow boats are it takes such a long time just to get to that location and it really truly shows that how special these fish are that we get here it's such a special fish that not a lot of us will ever get in our entire lifetime and even if we get the variants is so special that we might not even see this color morph we might not even see this color combination that we see on the fish here so even if the fish was located on the map as close as we possibly can to a location here it can be like up here in these random territories that we won't ever know of like or it might be even caught around this region it might be caught down here um, and it gets traveled back up to Sao Gabriel and from there it goes into Manaus but anyways the strain here that we have it's so special and you guys have to understand that to be caught in Sao Gabriel and to get transported to Barcelos which what you guys will see here and we're zooming out of the map like a lot and this is Barcelos and that's only halfway point where we see Manaus down here and to get quarantined here for a whole month and to get shipped all the way to the United States and have them shipped out to me in Wisconsin that's just craziness and only a very select few of people like legit in the United States have these fish here and I'm just so so very thankful to have these fish here all right we're gonna zoom back out from South America here we're gonna dive back in all right just to showcase you guys the three mark location on the map here in the middle there is Sao Gabriel on the right hand side of there is Manicap Peru and on the left hand side there is what is known as Iquitos Iquitos here is also another main exporting hub where we get all of our wild caught angelfish from and specifically this fish is the Rio Nene and marked on my map here is the beginning of the Rio Nene River as you can see here Rio Nene Iquitos and this river system is a very very um, windy river system the Rio Nene River feeds into the Amazon River as we zoom out here there's the Amazon River and this little river right here as you can see is the Rio Nene here and as you can see it is a very windy river system and Google satellite taking multiple pictures and composing it together you guys can definitely see that the color of the river changed a lot and it is a system that is very windy and even if we get the Rio Nene angelfish as you guys see here sometimes marketed as the Peruvian Altum which is a fake marketing name it's not an Altum it is a Scalaire but yeah this is where the Rio Nene comes from so we're just gonna zoom out of here and it's about the same distance as the other place that I've marked on the spot here and as you guys can see it seems like it's a little bit further away 
from um, compared to Sao Gabriel to Manaus here, or maybe around the same distance, because Manaus is a little bit further away from my marked territory mana cap brew there. But yeah, I'm always interested in where the location of all of our angelfish are caught from. Like yeah, we know that we catch our fish from South America in the Amazon, but we always take for granted and we never appreciate how much work that is put into here you know the fishermen that go and catch these fish in the wild um you know they're just like you and they're just like me you know there are some days where we don't catch fish at all and there are some days where we catch some fish and there is some success and to catch the fish and to keep them alive to have them go through multiple trading posts just to get to the export point it really shows a lot of how hardy these fish really are and I've seen videos from aquarium co-op of how the local there they will catch the best of the best and use those as export in anything less than good looking they would 100% release them back into the wild because it's also their source of food as well all right enough rambling there are also other angelfish here that are caught right here is the Suriname in Guyana and the state of Amapa so this is where we catch our Amapa Redbacks. This is where we catch our Surinames. And these are also this location. I don't know exactly on the map, but this is Guyana. And Guyana is also another angelfish. So it goes to show that this is where we get all of our angelfish. Now that we are a little bit more familiar with this location here, I'm gonna go ahead and change the view on the map here. And I changed it back to default. And as you guys can see here, just gonna zoom out a little bit. You guys see the line there? That line right there is the equator. And you guys can see where it's located above or below the equator. If we go any lower, like in Argentina, it's gonna be around the same temperature as we are experiencing up here in the north. <laughs> and that's pretty cold. So right now, they're like right in the middle of the equator right here. And it's also where our Altums are caught as well in the Rio Negro. Alright, and I switched back to satellite mode. Altum is also caught in the Rio Negro. And as you guys can see here, this whole river system is the Rio Negro right there. As you guys can see it. And it's amazing how the two different species live together but they don't interbreed with each other because they are different species. The location of where Sao Gabriel is also tells a lot about these angelfish. So the location, they're very close to the equator and also they are at the very, very beginning of the river system. It goes to show that the water quality for them has to be pristine. So as we all know, at the beginning of any river, the river is usually clean and the more it travels downward from the mountaintops the bigger the river becomes the dirtier it becomes so that's Manaus right there getting mixed up and even dirtier with the Amazon River <laughs> alright guys I've been waiting for such a long time <laughs> you guys just don't know I am so happy right now so excited for these fishes. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. You yeah, you too. I got them, guys. All right, guys. So we are downstairs, and this is the package here. All right, guys. Here we go with the unboxing here. Oh, man. Look at this. The styrofoam within the box here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the box. There was tape all the way around the seal here. That's why there's a little hole up here. I did cut off the tape, so let's see how they are doing. Oh, there's a heat pack right here. Still pretty warm. And let's see what we got. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> dude. They're all still alive. There's an ammonia absorbing block right there. So that's perfect. This is the Sarah bag. Wow, very nice, and there's the other bag, man all of them is doing alive and well, very happy for them, 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put them into the tank here. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and open the bag here. Alright guys, I just want to showcase how the fish look like right out of the bag and into my aquarium here. And uh, I ordered 12 from this breeder seller here. And they sent 13, which is great. You know, no complaints for me in terms of quantity. However, there is complaint of, in terms of quality. As you can see, the fish coming into field of view here, half of its face is missing. And I'm not happy with that. The mouthpiece, something's just wrong with it. And as you can see, another fish coming in here, definitely gill plate deformity, um, something that I would have not allowed to go through process of shipping or being sold to another person. In a heartbeat, I would get rid of that fish. Because of this, I'm not going to insert the breeder or the seller's name into this video here in respect for that person and their business. Now, if you're in the hobby long enough, you might know who the seller is. I have lots of respect for the seller breeding these wild caught fish. However, what they are doing here is not good. They are releasing fish with deformity and because of that even though it is the extra 13 what if one dies you know what if one dies and i'm left with that deformed fish what do i have left i only have the option of breeding that deformed fish here all right guys so i am not happy with the sizing of these fish as advertised and as you guys can see all in here they are all pretty much the same size i'm gonna go ahead and net them out and compare them to the coins that I have here. These are the quarter, nickel, penny, and dime size. I have these all around my fish room here, and even in a very old $1 coin and the new $1 coin size here. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and measure them. Um, these were marketed as nickel close to quarter size so in between these two size i think that they're more of this size right here or in between this size right here um, to be charged dollars per fish for this size while getting only this size i think it is a slap in the face and it is also a ripoff so i'm gonna go ahead and catch one of the fish in here at random i'm not gonna be selecting for size or anything like that All right, so I caught one here. Gonna make sure there's no droplet of water or whatever. And I'm just gonna quickly plop the fish on here. There you go. There's the fish and there's the dime and nickel and. All right, so I'm gonna put the video on pause here and as you guys can see clearly on the picture here um, the fish is definitely dime size and the thing is these fish they were marketed as nickel size borderline quarter size and i'm not sure what the seller was looking at when they post up the advertisements for these fish um, clearly they're not nickel size borderline quarter size they are dime size and you know this is the medium size fish that I caught at random um, there are smaller fish in here which will be smaller than dime size I'm totally not happy about that um, I'm not sure what they're looking at maybe they're looking at the tip of the mouth all the way to the tip of the caudal fin yes that is nickel size however we don't do that that's not how we measure angelfish because angelfish are circular fish we base the body size according to how the coin size is and because angelfish they have long flowing fins the fins don't count as body size and i was pretty upset about it i did message the seller you know but no response 
you know, no, not even a sorry, no nothing. I'm like, okay, I guess it is what it is. I got these fish and I paid a good amount of money for them. And I guess it is what it is. And then, you know what? <laughs> I guess they thought about it or something. And uh, next day over, they did refund me a portion of what I paid, you know. But that doesn't make things right, you know. I'm still upset about it, you know. In this order, I wanted it numbered. And the numbers that I got and the amount that he refunded back to me could have went towards more fish. And that's what I wanted it. I didn't want to order more fish and pay additional shipping with the amount that he refunded back to me. So that part, even though he tried to make it correct, it wasn't... I, I wasn't feeling happy about it. Also, one thing that I do have to mention is that if you guys take a look at the eyes of the fish here, its eyes is overly large compared to its body size. It tells me that these fish has been stunted. So it tells me that there's a lot of them within one aquarium and not enough water change has been done. So normally that's what causes stunting. So definitely these fish are stunted. I have fish that are quarter size and has the same size as the eyes that is showcased here. So definitely these guys are stunted and I hope that they can outgrow their stuntedness. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and resume the video here. Penny there, so I'm gonna go ahead and catch this fish back and put it back into the water here. All right, that guy is still doing fine. I assure you guys that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> He'll be fine. All right, and I am going to continue my rant on here. Um, this is about a week later, and you can definitely see that the fish are a little bit bigger, just a tad bit. They are growing ever so slightly in this 75 gallon, and they are pretty small that I'm still feeding them baby brine shrimp. I just want them to grow, guys, I really wish. I can showcase how the parents look to you guys, but because I messaged the seller here uh, many attempts and they were pretty much they ghosted me. They, it shows that they saw my message but never got back to me, um, which is really poor business practice. You know, in all my videos, I've always suggested to you guys good breeders um, and I always mention their name, but this is one of them where I want to opt out their name. I have a friend and he has similar experience to mine. Um, I'm not going to name who he is, but pretty much the same seller and breeder. They sent some fish over and the lack of respect towards these fish in terms of shipping, they put such a large box and the fish was in the box and the fish was just tossed like a rag doll during shipment and the fish arrived dead. And that shows that because of this attitude towards our fish, because of this attitude towards the lack of care, the lack of taking responsibility towards getting rid of these coals and, you know, just lying on your advertisement of the size of the fish, it totally destroys the angelfish community and it makes people not want to buy fish from us as breeders and seller and they rather just go to the random you know big box store that's definitely something that i want to note on this video here and i hope that i don't upset any of you guys and i hope that you guys do take something away in this video here we just want to keep everything positive here on this channel um, i'm sorry that this video is not the most motivating for you guys or i know that this video is not the most inspiring however it is a topic that i do want to touch upon and I do want us to move together as the angelfish community to care for our customer, to care for the fish that we sent out and not to make any false advertisement. Also, one thing that I want to add into, people is actually doing us a favor as breeders and seller from going out of their way and contacting us. And people are doing this from the pureness of their heart is trying to help us out and people like this the seller that is doing this is doing it completely wrong and this is just my opinion and i hope my opinion sounds correct to you but to send fish with deformity that deformed fish could have just totally been excluded from my order i don't need that fish because that fish is in the bag it's producing ammonia and it's taking up oxygen it could have killed another good fish that i had in the bag i firmly believe that there is a lot of supporters out there in this angelfish society of ours people going out of their way and reaching out to us like contacting us about these fish and going to our website i don't have one 
but for people that do have website going to our website and ordering fish from us like they don't get the chance to see the how the fish look like before it gets sent to us it's the job and responsibility of the breeder to send in good fish and to send in fish that are deformed and to send in fish that are smaller than advertised price or the price that they are sold at is really really disrespectful and the lack of respect towards these fish during shipment process if you guys take a look at here um, these fish are just basically being tossed within the styrofoam box here and you know there's no cushion being provided or anything and obviously during shipping process they're gonna get tossed around and being tossed around like that the air is gonna escape from the bag and the bag is gonna be depleted of oxygen and obviously the fish are not gonna make it it's gonna be dead on arrival I'm just lucky that in my case these bags did not pop during shipment process but anyone any breeder any responsible breeder would not have done this they would have definitely put in some sort of cushioning to prevent the bags from moving around and that is as easy as throwing in another bag full of just regular air you know bags are cheap you know just think about it providing that little bit amount of cushioning it really goes a long way and or not even bags you can just throw in some newspaper in there or something to help prevent the bags from flying all over the place and being squished and being popped. It really discourages people not to order from us. Now the purpose of this channel, the purpose of me doing all this is to help support the hobby, to help expose that hey there are angelfish breeders out there. And with this particular angelfish breeder seller, really in my opinion he's not doing any good in the hobby by doing this. Sending in calls and you know sending in fish that is smaller than advertised price to customers really is disrespectful to the buyer. Like normal people out there, okay, I'm not talking about breeders or whatever, but normal people usually are customers. Um, they are new to the hobby and they haven't have a certain strain or a certain type or a certain color of angelfish that we have. Think, just think about it. I'm not bashing on the seller, but in a way I am. So we as breeders and we as sellers want to learn from this mistake and don't do this, okay? Another thing that I do want to mention is that money is not everything, okay guys? The folks that want to buy fish from us, obviously they love their angelfish. Obviously they don't care about money, they just want good quality angelfish. And for them to spend $100 plus to buy six fish from us, you know, that's in including shipping and everything, okay, $100 plus, $250. Um, these guys they want good quality angel fish and let's say that they order six fish and one of them has deformity in this case I'm comparing it to my scenario you want a good number to grow to adult stage there will be deaths along the way not all fish will survive to adult stage and there's bound to have something happen to those fish along the way of them maturing and let's say that two passed away or something now we're down to two good looking fish or three good looking fish and those turn out to be all males it's not good for the buyer and this really discouraged people of buying Buying fish from us. Alright guys, I really wish I could showcase how these parents look like the Sao Gabriels. However, because of this incident, you know, I can't do that and I hope you guys understand. And uh, stick around, <laughs> subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I hope my little rambling at the beginning, you guys can take something out of my video here. Um, in the future, I definitely will showcase you guys how these guys look like as adult specimens. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoy that for your entertainment. Um, again, these fish were marketed as Santa Isabel Sao Gabriel. As you guys can see from the very beginning of the video here, Santa Isabel and Sao Gabriel is very very far apart and I truly believe calling them Santa Isabel is incorrect calling them Sao Gabriel's their true name is the correct way of labeling them and guys for this channel here I always want to make positive contents I always want to make motivational contents for you guys however staying long enough in this hobby and ordering fish from other people sooner or later you guys are gonna contact these kind of people and these kind of seller and breeder so it is just a fact of life 
you know, everyone's different in their own ways. And I have to understand that not everyone works the same way as I do. You know, that's just how life is. And that's just a matter of fact of life. And we all have to accept that. We can only encourage people so much to do the right things in life and do good things to good people. But you know, that's just how life is, you know? It doesn't always go the way that we plan. It doesn't always go the way that we want it to be. And in this video, I do not intend on upsetting anyone and if I did I truly apologize and for the seller I'm not sure if you guys are looking at my video here if you guys are looking at my video here it's time to step up your game man you guys do this for a living come on now alright guys I'll see you guys on the next one that's all I got for you